Okay, so what I want to do is replace this brake lever with this much cooler, smaller, blacker, adjustable brake lever. And then also replace uh, the clutch lever with the same thing, with a cooler, smaller, blacker clutch. So to take this off, it looks like we have just a flathead screw here and a little 10 millimeter nut underneath. out of there. That comes out. It appears that just slides out right like that. It's a little notch, peg in a notch right there. We do have the notch and this peg. I'm hoping that that's about as simple as it is. We'll find out because obviously your brakes are pretty fucking important. Feels good. Just adjust to loosen, maybe. But, all right, let's do the clutch and then we'll take it for a spin. Okay, so my camera stopped recording for a minute. So the next step, I had to remove a cell phone holder that I had clamped to the bars. It was getting in the way. And then loosen this clamp bolt here. And then after that, I'll show you next, we'll remove the clutch lever switch. So I just removed my cell phone holder so I can get to this clutch lever switch. And these two tiny little screws here. So I just want to be careful with that. Do not want to do any damage. Now, so that way we can get the clutch cable out of the lever, I'm just gonna come over here and loosen this just a bit, just to give some slack. To the cable. All right, so now that we have this loosened up a little bit, the clutch cable should be loose enough. We should be able to slide this up and pull this out. Just very carefully get that out of there so I don't damage this head at all. And now we'll just do everything in reverse. Now that we have it back on, we're just going to tighten this back up. Okay. 
Okay, after a little adjusting, I think I got it pretty good. Do that, it loosens up all the way up and it's tight. So I adjusted it somewhere right there in the middle, which seems to be good. I'll have to just take it for a ride and see how it feels. All right, so we got the uh, brake and the new clutch levers on. So we'll go out and give it a, a try. But so far, it seems all good. The brakes work. It shifts. And hopefully this Amazon driver is leaving my neighborhood because there's a gate and that gate doesn't usually open for me. Oh, damn it, he's turning. He's doing a U-turn right in front of me. All right, let's see if this gate opens. If not, I have to go out the inn. There's a sensor here. Not opening. And they've been doing all this construction out here for a while now. Ooh, nice smooth. 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 I like it. And I think they look a little bit better than uh, those big silver. Those big silver monstrosities. Oh, starting off in second there. Give the wave. So it is a hot day in Vegas today. I think it's right around 100, 101 degrees right now, but we're supposed to hit a high of 108. So I don't plan on going too far. That guy was hit by the bushes. No motorcycle wave there. So I'm just gonna take it up the street back here. I'm gonna head a mile or so up this street, right up this street, and then take another right where it's a road that's usually pretty empty. That's one thing about in Vegas is most of the streets are just grids and traffic. You don't get like nice windy back roads or anything like that. Come on, buddy, you've got a green. In these streets, like this one, Tell me to slow down because I am going uh, rocking 35 miles an hour. So yeah, like I was saying, you know, most of the st uh, streets in Vegas are just grids and traffic and stoplights. So you don't get any windy roads, no back roads, things like that. You got to really get outside outside the city in order to get any kind of roads at all. I and mean, where I'm going to now, right now, isn't a great road either, but I have to go a little bit further. Uh, that mountain off to my left, that is a Frenchman Mountain, Sun Mount. This area is called Sunrise. I think that mountain right there is specifically called Frenchman's Mountain. And if you go along the other side of it, there's a road that takes you into uh, the Lake Mead recreational area. And so you get into the Lake Mead area, into the uh, to National Park. 
you get some decent roads out there and you can either go all the way up to Valley of Fire from that direction or you can go the other way south and head down towards um, the Lake Mead area and also like Hoover Dam and uh, Boulder City in that area. this guy the wave. I was riding with my sister the other day. She has a Jeep and I was driving her Jeep and she's like, you're not waving. I was giving her a bad rep by not waving to all the other Jeep riders. It's like, I'm in a Jeep. I don't normally ride a Jeep. I'm not looking for Jeeps. I didn't even notice there were other Jeeps on the road. Right, so far these gears seem to be working well. I don't know what's up this way. We could have been taking a right back there and ridden that road. Let's see what's up. Oop, that didn't shift that time. But so far these new levers seem to be doing the job. And I do like that you can click and adjust, because I did adjust where it was a little tight. Yeah, that doesn't look like there's really anything up this way. This looks like pavement ends. So we'll just turn around here. In this direction, you can actually get a nice view of the city of Las Vegas, the skyline. You can see on the right side, the stratosphere. Straight ahead, you can see uh, the new resort world. That's the, the red and black building there. And then just a little bit left of that, you can see like, uh, what's it called? The Encore and the, the wind, the wind and the Encore. And there's a Jeep. My sister would have waved. All right, so we'll just uh, take a left here on this street. I haven't tried going into neutral yet. I'll have to try that. Nice and smooth. So right here, we're pretty much right on the edge, the east side of Vegas. You can see there's houses and civilization to my right, and on the left, nothing. It's kind of where civilization ends. And this road isn't that great of a road either. You see the Vegas skyline? It looks like they're putting a the road there. It cuts right through. So you got a housing development on the right and nothing on the left. Now if you continue to the left, that would take you east, so you'd eventually run into, uh, you know, the Lake Mead area, the Colorado River. If you went south, south, if you're looking straight south, you can see that's towards Henderson. It's a speed limit 25 miles an hour. Which that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm not going faster than 20 miles and 25 miles an hour for anyone who may be wondering. Definitely not. I am going 24, no faster. I don't know what 
what the reason people come out here other than it looks like there's some sort of industrial area right here. Maybe a water treatment plant. And there's a desert off to the left. Someone's out here doing donuts in their car. The ground is just black from spinning. Looks like the road ends right up here. Little car parking area. It's probably like some desert hiking trails over here or something. So it looks like there's picnic tables. It's like bike paths, no motorized vehicles, little picnic area, and then the road is dirt, which I don't want to go down the dirt road. But you can get a view of Vegas skyline from here, all the way to the very end of Mandalay Bay area. Next to Mandalay Bay, you can see the Luxor, the pyramid building. You can see the MGM and the city center area. Never hiked that mountain. I'd like to sometime. But from what I hear, a couple of things. One is it's actually a pretty difficult climb. Uh, it's pretty. It's just like steep, gravelly, rocky trail, and it's not necessarily a nice climb in the sense of you know the, the trail itself. But the view from the top is supposed to be pretty spectacular. But. I think I had to do a few walks before I try climbing. I'm just out of shape for that kind of thing. But it's also, this is heading into the really hot part of the year. So I probably want to wait until the fall. Either that or you just have to do it really early in the morning before it gets too hot. I mean, this, this morning it was already mid 90s by 9 a.m. I mean, at 6 a.m. it's already in the 80s, so you want to it's usually best to wait until the cooler months to do hiking.
but yeah so far these uh you know these are those cheap levers uh you do see some complaints from people from them but so far i have had no issues been working well Being in this heat. That's some dedication right there. It's one thing, you know, they always say, well, it's a dry heat, but that's actually true. That is so true. I'll take 105 degrees in the desert over 80 degrees in some humid climate. Hell, I'll take it over 75 degrees in a humid climate. We would just sweat. Here in 105, you don't feel um, sweaty. You don't get sweaty. You don't feel it because it just immediately evaporates right out of your skin. So that's why it is dangerous. You do have to uh, drink plenty of fluids. And you have to consciously do it because your body isn't telling you. You know, when you're in a humid environment, you just feel the weight of the heat because you're just sweating and you feel gross and you feel tired here you don't get like that it just feels hot but you don't get like that tired feeling that heavy weighted feeling so you think you're okay My final verdict, well, my verdict so far, I guess you could say, is I like these levers. They work well, no complaints. I think I'll keep them.